And so here comes the second part, which is mass flow. This is what happened in the first step in foam loading in the upper path pathway, where the sucrose was made in the leaf, uh, and then it gets transported into the flow up here, and then it travels along. As we mentioned before, there is a turgor pressure. So we say that here, when the where the water move has has a high turgor pressure, and here at where the sinks are, so the parts that actually uses up the sucrose, we say that they have a low pressure. Simply put, mass flow is literally talking about the assimilates uh, flowing from the source with a high pressure to the sinks with a low pressure down the pressure gradient. And finally, we get to the third step, which is flow and unloading. So once you get to the sinks, you want to unload the assimilates from the flow and to the actual cells. And again, this is a very straightforward process and it is a passive process because it doesn't actually require any energy at all. So the sucrose are now all in here. The sinks actually use up the sugars for various things, so therefore they will have a low sugar concentration. The sugar concentration gradient here will then allow the sucrose to diffuse from this place to the sink. So once the sucrose actually enters the cell in the sink, it will pass the sucrose along to other cells uh, because they also need the sugar as well. Uh, so they either pass it along or they actually convert uh, the sucrose inside that cell to something else. And the whole point of this is to maintain the gross concentration gradient to keep getting the sucrose. Otherwise, it will just quickly reach an equilibrium and you won't get enough sucrose in the end. Then finally, because you are losing the assimilates, these F2 elements, you are therefore increasing the water potential. And therefore, because you have a higher water potential in here now than that way, so the water will naturally move by osmosis from a high water potential to a low water potential area. So as you can see, quite often, once the sugar or the sucrose moves, the water follows. Um, so it can either go into the sink or it can actually go to uh, adjacent xylem to enter the transpiration stream. So that one contributes towards the movement of water uh, along the plant. There you have it. So a very quick summary. We've got the phloem loading that happens in this area, which is an active process by apoplast pathway. Um, then it goes into mass flow because of the turbulence and turquoise pressure. You get phloem loading uh, where the sucrose diffuses into the sink or the cells around it, and then it's then moved to other cells around it or convert it to something else, for example, glucose, to maintain the concentration difference. Because of a loss of assimilates in here, you're increasing the water potential, therefore the water then also moves into the sink uh, following the sugar. Or it can then enter the adjacent xylem for the transpiration stream, moving water to somewhere else.